This interview is being conducted for the Veterans History Project for the Library of Congress. The veteran's name is Robert Henderson. He served in the Pacific during World War II. He achieved the rank of Staff Sergeant. We are recording this on the 21st of February, 2015. I'm Will Hines and conducting this interview, no relation. So, Mr. Henderson, um, can you kind of get going to where you just were with uh, talking about being raised in Wisconsin and growing up on the farm and that kind of stuff? Well, that's, yes, right. I was, I was raised in Wisconsin, and, and my dad was primarily a farmer. However, he also was a, was a blacksmith during some of those early years. And um, <laughs> I don't... <laughs> so, you, so you were raised on the farm. Did you have to do farm work every morning? Oh, yeah. Wake well, up really early? By the time I was 15 years old, I was milking cows at 5 o'clock in the morning. And <laughs> now, how cold was it in Wisconsin? That, oh... Uh, the coldest I can remember, my oldest daughter was born, it was 43 below zero in Superior, Superior Wisconsin, in the morning she was born. That's, a, that's the coldest I can remember. Oh my God. That was many years later, of course. Mm -hmm. So, you are, did you go to high school in I Wisconsin? Went, went to high school in Spooner, Wisconsin. And did you have the bus come pick you up every morning, or did yeah, you? Yeah, rode a bus to town from, I lived out about six miles out of town. Wow. And uh, rode the bus. Did you play any kind of sports in high school? Uh, not. I, I was with a 4-H and I, I played softball and did a lot of things for the 4-H, but I, I didn't participate in uh, sports at school. My, my dad was kind of against that, afraid I'd get hurt and couldn't, <laughs> couldn't do the farm couldn't work. Couldn't do farm work? <laughs> it was all about working. Um, so, you decided to enlist when you were, you said, 20? 20. I was 20. 20. And so you had stayed, did you graduate high school and you stayed on the farm until you decided to enlist? Well, I had a little a little short time in there Then I worked for my uncle as a butcher. I worked at a butcher shop. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then I got with a good friend of mine and we decided to go down and join the Marine Corps. Join in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And so at this time, we weren't in the war. So what, you know, a lot of veterans I've interviewed said, you know, they saw what was happening and they decided to join up, but at the time we weren't in the war, so what were you, what were you thinking well, at the time? Well, that, that was part of the reason is that we knew that something was happening and mm -hmm. with the turmoil that was going on in the country, so we decided to go ahead and join up. And, and so did you walk to, uh, did you walk into town and enlist or did you go to another no, town I to went enlist? From, I lived, was in Spooner, Wisconsin at that time and I went, drove down to Minneapolis and enjoyed, in, enlisted in Minneapolis, Minnesota. How far away was that? You remember? Uh, Minneapolis, uh, I guess about 100 miles. That's not too bad. I think it's, that's correct. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you enlist, and did you get to go home for another four weeks before they called you into duty, or what, what happened uh, after you enlisted? I had to go home and have my dad sign my papers because I was 20, and they wouldn't let you in at that time until you were 21. So he had to release me. And then I went back and went from there to San Diego, giving my Whatever they give you, the mm -hmm. a dollar two ninety eight, and you go send you off. To <laughs> how how did your parents feel about you enlisting? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I I don't think they was real happy, but <laughs> you know, um, because later my brother also joined, and two two boys in the family, four of us, two girls and two boys, and uh, we were both overseas, and I, I kind of. You have to excuse me. I might, as you know, I'm I'm 95 years old. I can't quite get things exactly. Oh no, that's I can get to all of it eventually, but. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, parents weren't too happy that you enlisted, but you know they they accepted that. So you you took a train to San Diego. Yeah. yeah. How long was that trip? Do you remember? How long did it take you to get? I believe it took about three days to go across the country. Oof. I'm I'm sure it was right right at that. Mm -hmm. Two and a half, three days. Yeah. And once you get to San Diego, what happens from there? Well, went out to the brain base and, and then they got you signed up with a group of people and and um, I was uh, a kind of a fortunate thing. The, the platoon I was in was a bunch of guys from Texas and I was, at that time I was 5'9 and I was the second shortest man in the platoon. <laughs> oh, all tall fellas like you guys. <laughs> Yes, sir. Big tall cowboys from Texas, huh? 
But I, uh, I, I enjoyed the training because I had been in the National Guard before I was in the service, my Marine Corps. Okay. So as far as military part, I was well acquainted with that. So did you go through basic training in Went San Diego? In San Diego, yeah. One of the things I, I did enjoy was the, the rifle range. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what guns were you shooting? Do you remember? Were they the old Springfield? Old, old three. Mm -hmm. Bolt action, yeah. Wow. We, we shot at 300 and 500 yards. And um, How good of a marksman were you? I know you had the sharpshooter medal. I just I just missed the, the top ranking by, by two shots wow. on five, at 500. Jeez. <laughs> Did you shoot, grow up shooting you know, guns in Wisconsin? Yeah, I used to hunt with the 22. I shot a lot of squirrels and rabbits. And it probably helped. Cleaned them up and ate them. <laughs> yes, sir. So you go through basic training, and where did you go from there in San Diego? After San okay, Diego? I was there quite a while. I went through regular training, and then they, they had a group of us that went to what they called C school. Mm -hmm. And after that, then I was given orders to go to to join the Pennsylvania, U.S. Pennsylvania. So I went to Fresno, I think, and got a tanker all by myself. There was no other Marines with me. I went to San Diego. I went to Pearl Harbor. You went to Pearl Harbor by yourself on a tanker? Yeah. Uh, I don't. I can't tell you. I can't remember what, how I got from when I got to to Pearl Harbor. How I got to Pearl down to the harbor. But uh, anyway, I reported for duty on the Pennsylvania on the fourth, second of February, nineteen forty-one. Were you happy to go out to Pearl Harbor in Hawaii and the beautiful yeah, beaches? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I was. I was perfectly happy about being there. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. the the training was was a pleasure for me. Being a farm boy, I was, you know, those city boys were having a hard time with all the, the workouts they gave you and the drilling and whatever. Mm -hmm. But I just laughed. I <laughs> I had a good time. <laughs> yes, sir. So you were assigned to the USS Pennsylvania. That was the flagship of the Pacific Fleet. Wow. And. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of things that happened early on. Admiral Kimmel was the admiral in charge at that time. And um, just regular duty. And then the last weeks of November 1941, the fleet went to out for maneuvers. Um, I guess they call them war games or whatever they call them. They went to mm -hmm. out to sea for two weeks. and. Um, I was assigned to a 5 inch 51 broadside weapon, which I didn't participate in any. I just was there. All the old orders took care of that. But we shot, we outshot the, 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 the Navy boys. There you go. <laughs> so, you, uh, what were your duties up until the war games in November on the ship? What would you, you know, what would be your daily task? You know, a guard duty, of course, that was the big thing. Uh, I remember when some of the assignments I had, we had a prisoner. I, I was a, a guard of the prisoner who took him to lunch and that kind of thing. For, but uh, it's so routine, unless something special is going on, you know. Mm -hmm. You have your assignments of guard duty here or there or messengers. Um, but anyway, uh, in November, after they we went to, on maneuvers, the fleet came back into Pearl Harbor on the 5th of November. And uh, they went back to Fort Island. I'm sure you've seen pictures of Fort Island where all the battleships were sunk. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. They went back in there. And I was one of 21 Marines that was assigned to the Commander in Chief Pacific Fleet as Marines that did service work, we messages, whatever you, you did there. And um, we, I went over with, with that 21 Marines. We got settled in on the fifth. Uh, didn't have got assignments probably on the, on the sixth. And since I've always been an early riser, on December the seventh, I was up. <clears throat> and uh, uh, the barracks that we stayed in had a, two floors and uh, had a lanai. I was out that morning looking at Pearl Harbor, just standing out there after having breakfast. And uh, all of a sudden, this plane come right over my head. I mean, I could almost, I could throw a rock and hit it easy, a Japanese plane. And I said to my fellow Marines, the crazy Air Force has even painted their planes. 
Well, about that time, he leveled off and dropped a torpedo, and... And, and you were watch, you were standing over the harbor watching all of this? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could see it as plain as day, uh, you know. And uh, so we started trying to get some weapons and ammunition and what have you, and ran down to headquarters. And um, they, I don't know why they sent me, they grabbed me and put me in, in, uh, as guard for Admiral Kimmel. Uh, one of the incidents I think that may not be of interest except just a kind of a comment, during the torpedoing and all of that, I was outside and then they signed me to guard Admiral Kimmel because they thought the Japs were going to land. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the strafing and that part, a spent shell came through the window and hit Admiral Kimmel on the chest and he reached down and picked it up and said, well, oh, that's one that didn't get me. And you know, the interesting part of that to me was 10 years later, the Saturday Evening Post wrote the story about Admiral Kimmel and that, and that bullet, and I was standing right by him. <laughs> of course, I wasn't recognized, but I was standing right by him when it, when it happened. So how, how chaotic was it, you know, the, oh. the strafing and the destruction? <clears throat> you, you just can't imagine how the, all these battleships were, a, 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 you know, on fire. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I saw sailors jumping off the ships and trying to swim over to shore. Of course, the water was burning too. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't actually see the Oklahoma tip over, but I saw it shortly after it rolled over. Mm. So many of those things are, are vivid now, that but you, it's hard to put a time space on it. Mm -hmm. When did I see it? You know, was it today or? Right. Last week, you, you can't remember that. So you were you were in the car when it was being strafed, or when the admiral no, was. I was in the office. Oh, okay. Headquarters. Wow. And they uh, they were dropping bombs, and it didn't last long. You know, history. All you got to do is look a little bit of history to tell you that whole thing didn't last but a, a, a an hour. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just tore the place apart. That seems like a long time to me if I was under fire. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, the, it, it was it was just awful, you know. And I guess I think about some of the things that happened. For some reason, I was assigned to drive a staff car. I just drove officers around here and there, and they blacked out everything except a spot about that big in a blue light on their automobile. And I guess they picked me because I had good night eyes. <laughs> I could see good at night. <clears throat> but uh, I, that's one of the things I did. My main, the, far, uh, the, the most important thing I think did right after the war started, I was in, assigned to the communication shack mm -hmm. and delivered messages to all the staff officers as they came in. And they didn't realize until after the Battle of Midway that we were enlisted men delivering all these secret messages. <laughs> I didn't like that. So they took us off and signed ensigns to that job. <laughs> wow. So, how was, did you participate in the cleaning up of Pearl Harbor and trying to... No, just we, we were all assigned to guard duty and, and, uh, and, and I was assigned to ride with Admiral Limits when he went someplace or in the office mm -hmm. if they had messages that came in I delivered them to him or to the staff officers. I met all the big shot officers, Admiral Kimball, Nibbets, Hip Halsey. I, I even drove Admiral Kincaid when he came in after about, oh, a short time after the, maybe six months after the war. Came in for a little a recreation, drove him down to the Royal Hawaiian Hotel for a little recreation. <laughs> I got a picture of that. Okay. I, I can show you a picture by, yeah. of the car. It's just a it's okay. okay. He's standing there and saw the whole thing. I know. That's incredible. That, that doesn't look like you can't find that. It sounds like you had the best parents for mm -hmm. If you have any questions, by the way, you can. Okay, I don't want to step on your toes. No, but. no. I, the more, the, the more, it's easier yeah, for okay. me to just... That was a car I, I was driving. What is it? It was Chevy. Oh, Chevy? Yeah. That's like awesome. a 40. I, I think it was. Yeah, that's amazing. Lovely. Can I take a picture of that? Yeah. So, the, you know, the days after Pearl Harbor, 
what was it like around around where you were? Well, it was very scary because everybody was on edge because we were anticipating the Japs to come in, and uh, you better be real careful about walking around for all the people that was on guard duty. You'll have to get shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Uh, Did you think that they would? Send an invasion force in. So, were you guys preparing any type of beach defenses? What was, what yeah, was happening? Uh, see, I was assigned to this particular thing. I wasn't involved in other than this, the the pack operation. Mm -hmm. I, uh, we, um, you'd have to excuse me if I ramble a little bit. I I, I don't have everything particular. No, I, square it's in my mind. It hadn't been but seventy three years. <laughs> <laughs> Just seventy three years. <laughs> Uh, like I said, the main one of the main things I did was right to start with at the beginning of the war was delivered messages. We there was several of us assigned to the communication shack delivered messages to the all the staff officers. And whenever you delivered these messages, did you know what they'd say, or would you just not look at them and hand them in? I imagine we read them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. <laughs> uh, didn't pay that much attention to it, but. It was interesting, the, the things that was coming in, you know, all the battles that was going on, what the results were, and we kept up with it pretty good. One of the things that I, I can't help but say is, you know, reporters today, there's a lot of them getting in trouble talking about things they didn't do that they didn't. Well, I, I remember many times during the war, I'd hear one of those reporters reporting on something, and I'm standing where he's talking about, and there's nothing going on. Yeah. <laughs> so Honestly, I, that happened. Embellishing a little bit. Yeah. 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 It yeah. probably was going on around, but you know. So you stayed in Pearl Harbor until '43. Until June of '43, and then I went back, and in order to get back to do something different, I signed up to go to quartermaster school. So I went back and went to court. Well, I got a 30-day furlough, and then I went to quartermaster school, and then they assigned me to the first Marine Division. So I went back overseas, and that's when I went from those islands, one place to another, everywhere first Marine Division went then until the end of the war. And so you, um, you got to go home to Wisconsin, is that what you said? You said? Yeah, for, uh, for 30 days. Went went back to the states, and then went home for 30 days, or I had 30-day leave. Travel time took a, lot, <laughs> a, lot, a week of it at least. And so you go back to Wisconsin, then go back out to Pearl Harbor? Yeah. And then you are shipped to uh, New Caledonia? Well, I went, uh, I went back and let me think a minute. I went to school. You know, I can't honestly remember when I was assigned to or, or gone to the 1st Marine Division, but it was sometime, when, I think the quartermaster school was is maybe a, a month or maybe, yeah, about a month. So then I went from there directly to the 1st Marine Division, but I, I can't tell you exactly how I got there. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> I can't fine. can't remember. So what did you all do in quartermaster school? What was your, what were you learning? Um, well, mostly about how you purchase things and how you use the, uh, any government, um, what are they called, railroads and what have you that, I can't think of the, what do you, what do you call the, they took advantage of anything that was less expensive to ship. Oh. You learned all about those things. All the logistics and. I All can't. I just. I just can't remember. That's just too long ago. It wasn't too important. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, sir. But um, one thing about the island of Pavuvu that I think is interesting. It may not be to to the public, but uh, I met my wife's brother-in-law on Pavuvu, and he had a picture of of her, and I asked him if he thought she would write to me if I wrote to her. So I wrote to her. And we wrote to, from the time I was on Pavuvu until I got to, o to Okinawa, and we ended up after the war of getting married. Oh, wow. Wrote, wrote letters for about two years there, and, and uh, 
I got home December the 16th, 45, mm -hmm. stayed home and said Merry Christmas and I took off for North Carolina. She was in Gastonia, North Carolina, <laughs> went up there and stayed so there. So that's, that's how you ended up down here, huh? That's right. Got, got married. We went back to Wisconsin and then we finally came back south again. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's incredible. So you just, you saw a picture of her and you yeah. asked to write to her. Right. We only been married 30, 69 years. I always tell people, you know, I've been married 69 years to the same woman because today, you know, the divorce rate is mm -hmm. so that yeah, it's right. unusual to be married that long. Mm -hmm. So, you joined the 1st Marine Division and do you remember where you went from there, what island? I think the first stop we made, I'm trying to remember the name of this, this transport ship, but I can't. I think we stopped at New Caledonia for a, a short time. Mm -hmm sort of getting reorganized and uh, oh, it, sorry to interrupt but what weapon did you have what equipment were you assigned the, the only thing I had was a 45 yeah. I, I was not uh, I was not in the what do you call the, the fighting force or uh, the front a line rifleman. Um, I was close enough on Okinawa that I could see the Marines and the army fighting the Japs on the on the island I mean, on the city, um, can't even say the name of the city right this minute. Um, hmm. Anyway, it was leveled. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, then we went from there, board ship, down to Brisbane, Australia, and they, they resupplied. I think that the first next stop was uh, New Britain or New Guinea one, and they're all one island or the other. It's an awful place. New Guinea is a terrible place. I mean, it's hot and sticky and lots of bugs and a lot of people got sick, you know. Yeah. And then we went to Pavuvu, and that was just a little bitty island. As I told you, you could, a strong wind, you could spit across it and 30,000 miles. <laughs> so, so on New Guinea, did you see any fighting or were you? No, it was pretty well Settled. I, I, I saw some Japs that were dead, but... Uh, mm -hmm. but uh, and then Pavuvu, was it already taken over as well whenever yeah, they, you were on the island? Yeah, then they went, went to Palilu. Mm -hmm. That was a short battle that the Marines... Um, my a man that became my brother-in-law was wounded on Pavuvu. I mean, Palilu. All those islands are hard to <laughs> take them pronounced. Mm -hmm. Then we uh, then we made preparations to go to Okinawa. Uh, and uh, as I said, uh, our outfit went in a uh, second wave and, and um, we did whatever you had to do. I, it's hard for people to understand when you're a Marine and you're asked to do something or not asked or told to do something. Um, I drove a big truck off from, from off the ship down to the, where we were going to camp. <laughs> mm -hmm. That wasn't my job, but but I knew how to drive, so. Um, so you were on the second wave at Okinawa? Uh-huh. And what did you, what did you ride in? Did you ride in a Higgins boat or the amphibious, um, you know, the, the, the boats and wheels? Think, I can think of what they call those. Am, no, uh, not Amtrak. Uh, you pull up to the beach and you drop down, you know. A Higgins boat with the, with the ramp? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't think they called it that, but mm -hmm. there's so many things that happened during this period that uh, I have I, no way of putting them in the proper sequence. <laughs> mm -hmm. I understand that. Anyway, uh, uh, another thing that happened on, Oka, uh, on Okinawa besides the fighting, that was they lost more people and more ships at, at the Battle of Okinawa than they did any other Pacific fleet, any other Pacific war, any other battle. Mm -hmm. um, we'd see the Japanese planes come over, they had what they called a Benny, and it had a, um, a bomber underneath it, it drop off. I could see those dropping and then they were, they'd come down and dive on the ships, hit the ships. Um, you saw that? Yeah, I, I, I've seen several of them, the, the planes come over and and then be this, whatever they call those 
fighter, not fighter planes, bomber planes, the suicide planes. Kamikazes. Kamikazes. Yeah, kamikazes. They come down to they hit the ship. You saw that happen? Yeah. yeah. Wow. From the ship that you were on? No, I was on the, on the base. The ships were oh, you were the on the base. I was right, right on the island. Right. Let's see, why can't I say the name of that town that they blew apart? <laughs> uh, on Japan. There, in Okinawa? On Okinawa. Okay. The, the only big city that was there, we leveled it, the, the ships leveled it from the... Was oh, during, no. the, during that period, our ships were out firing on... You guys. Sorry guys. No, you're good. <laughs> oh, so... Oh, you're good. So, how long were you on Okinawa? Because I know Okinawa was a long, drawn-out battle. I really don't know. I, I was there until the war ended. Mm -hmm. well, the, when the atomic bomb was dropped, you know, that that was a, we heard about that, of course we didn't see it, but we heard about it, and that was the beginning of the end of the war. What went through your mind whenever you heard about the atomic bomb? Praise the Lord, it's going to be over soon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did people believe it, that we actually had a bomb that could do that? I, I don't think we ever, we, we, we were privy to that kind of information. You get some information on the on radio, you know. Um, but boy, that was something when that bomb was first dropped, and then the second bomb they dropped when the war was over then. And Where were you when you found out the war was over? Do you remember? Uh, well, I was <laughs> just wherever we camped on Okinawa, in the southern end of the island. Mm -hmm. One of the other interesting things about it, my brother was in the 6th Marine Division, and the 6th Marine Division was at the north end of Okinawa, and we were at the southern end of the island. And uh, just out of a, a side thing that I remember real well, uh, he, I heard that his outfit got shot up pretty bad. So I got to cut the CEO's Jeep, and I, I went up like a nut, drove through enemy territory up to see my, see my brother. At the north end of the island, oh my God. <laughs> you know, honestly, people probably don't believe, but I never, I didn't worry, I, I never crossed my mind about getting killed or being afraid to do something. Uh, so you drove through enemy territory by yourself on a jeep? Yeah, up to see my brother. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> probably, oh. I, I haven't the slightest idea how far it was, but probably 25 miles or so, or you know. <laughs> Did you have problems with snipers and that? Not where I was. The part of the island was, you know, that island is not very big. And as I mentioned to you, Noho, Noho, that's the name of the town. Noho. Yeah. They, I could see the, the servicemen, the, the Marines and the service soldiers going. I was that close that I could see them going to the battle on the, on the hill down there. But uh, I, I, you know, Three, four, five hundred yards is is pretty close, or half a mile or a mile is pretty still pretty close to what's going on. Yes, sir. Did you have any close calls as far as uh, um, shrapnel, or I mean, you were standing right next to the. Yeah, the uh, one thing that happened, there were the Japanese planes were coming over, and and uh, of course the artillery was shooting at them, and a big art piece of an artillery shell came through the tent and right down my bunk. I was outside. <laughs> Just a big oh, chunk that, of the show. That was pretty close. <laughs> That's pretty close. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. I, I had in mind Pearl Harbor and, and that, there was one other thing that happened to me that was real close, but anyway, that, that was the closest one that I could think of. <laughs> Glad you were outside. Big, big piece of shrapnel. I was outside watching the planes up there. Yeah. Holy cow. So, the end of the war and you were shipped home, or you shipped back to San Diego? Shipped back, went back to Pendleton. If you know, heard about Pendleton, that's a big green base yeah. here. Um, and um, I was assigned in to, and, well, kind of in charge of the, the all the stuff, for quartermaster stuff for people that were coming back and all that. I was pretty teed off because I had, they gave us points at that time. And for how long you've been overseas, or how long you've been in service, 
and uh, you had to have, if I remember correctly, you had to have 65 points to get discharged. And when I got to Pendleton, I had 185 points because of all my time overseas. See, because I went over in 41 and came back in 45, so that outside of two trips back to the States, I, I was overseas. I spent 51 months in the Pacific. They, 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 call, they talk about going to Iraq and those places and staying over there a year. Well, I spent 51 months out there, wow. one island or another. <laughs> That's incredible. Just without without any kind of R&R? Uh, &R, yeah, I, no, I, had, I, got, I went back, I got twice, I, I got to go home for 30 days. And all that 51 months? Yeah. Just twice you got to yeah. go home. Was it hard to go back? Back to the Pacific after being home for thirty yeah. days. Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty tough. Yeah. Mm. Um, actually, from the time, let me think a little bit here. Forty-three, the fall of forty-three, somewhere in there, when I went to Marine, with the first Marine Division overseas, from from forty-three until. November of 45, I, I was over there all the time, one island or the other. Couldn't go back to the States then, you know. Yeah. Quite a stretch. It's <laughs> incredible. So, you go back to, um, where'd you say, Camp Pendleton? Went back to Pendleton, and uh, well, this is kind of interesting. I don't know if you want this in the record or not, but. Sure. <laughs> Uh, I got to be good buddies with the first sergeant, and, and uh, we were talking about I had so many points, and I, I really was more than eligible to be discharged. And uh, so I bought him a case of beer, and we had a good time, and he put me on the list to go. <laughs> I swear to goodness, that's true. Because <laughs> whatever works. The transfer going back to Chicago to be discharged. <laughs> Getting good with the first sergeant is always a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I was a staff sergeant, but I, I didn't have the authority that he had. And I was in the quartermaster, too. The, the line duty was, was... Often I wished I'd have stayed in the line duty. Because, uh, uh, several of my friends, they get promoted up to gunny sergeant or first sergeant, that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. I didn't have that opportunity where I was. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, I can think of another incident that I, it may be of interest. Um, I was in the quartermaster, and this bunch of Marines I was with, we, we did whatever we had to do. Or it was a sign. We, at a time, we were changing out a lot of the trucks and what equipment. New stuff was coming in, and I was driving trucks and what have you. And the, our company commander heard me grind the gears one day. Man, alive, he got me. He says, we're going to take a test tomorrow. So, he t <laughs> we got a big six by six and we went out through the rough roads and one real steep hill, I'm telling you, steep. He says, stop here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a truck driver now. <laughs> anyway, he stopped and uh, I was able to handle the situation. Got by all right. He, he was tough. But like I said, I wasn't a truck driver. I was just doing that just to have something to do. You know, mm -hmm. swapping out all these trucks and equipment. And yeah, because I was in the quartermaster, the, a lot of uh, repair stuff was coming in, cartons and cartons of transmissions and all that kind of stuff. You know, coming in. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So I have one more question. What what would probably be the most vivid thing that you remember about being at Pearl Harbor, December seventh? Uh, without a question, where I was standing looking over Pearl Harbor, when that plane came over my head, mm -hmm. I, I, I can't describe it enough how close that was to my head standing on that barracks. And when it down there dropped that torpedo and things blew up, of course a lot of other planes dropped torpedoes at, within minutes, you know. You, you just something that's, that's right plain in your vision. I can remember that as if it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Mr. Henderson, I really, I really appreciate this interview, and I thank you for your service that you did for well, this country. All right, yes, sir. I hope thank it, you, sir. I, I hope it wasn't too rattly here and there. Two. Okay. Uh, Go back for a second. Just tell us what, what your impressions of Admiral Nimitz were. Oh, I, he, he was a 
fine man. I got to know as a meet. I met and saw all these people, but Admiral Nimitz was really a really a nice person as well as being so brilliant. But one day we went to the uh, uh, the Yorktown had been shot up. This was you know probably within the first few months of the war, mm -hmm. and came into Port Harbor to be repaired. And Admiral Nimitz went down to make a talk, and I was on duty that day, so I rode in the van with or the limousine with him, and uh, I had never been on a carrier, so I went. Well, he went to make a speech. I'm nosing around the carrier, seeing what's going on, and all of a sudden I hear the the, the bosun piping the admiral off the ship, and I'm standing up on a flight deck, and I'm on duty. <laughs> I ran and. If, if you've ever been on an air carrier, going from the hangar deck down to the, I mean the flight deck to the hangar deck, long rails, I grabbed those rails, slid down that thing off the gangway and got to the end of the car before it left. <laughs> that was that was quite exciting. <laughs> Not like exhilarating. Eh? So, so that, so Admiral Nimitz treated the uh, soldiers with oh, kindness and respect as well as can. So he was a leader that yeah he's one of those leaders that everybody respected and, and, and loved it sounds like being close around there i'd never heard that man raise his voice to anybody that went in to see him or anything like that yeah delivered lots of messages to him you know hmm. was he a five he is a five star was five star at the time yeah 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 not too many of those no that's one of the uh, uh this group of marines i talked to last year he said you know he Looking at my the picture that he signed for me, he said that was a five star. <laughs> you know, he's an important man. Yeah, mm -hmm. very important. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, did you have you been able to go back to Pearl Harbor uh, over the years? I, I really regretted that I didn't take the opportunity to go. They had lots of groups of people going back to Pearl Harbor. Sure. And uh, you I think can't, you... I can't say that I have an excuse for not going, but would you, would that be something you would? Do my now? wife and I talked about it this past year, December. So that's 73 years this past December, December. Mm -hmm. uh, let's try to make it in 75. Well, that's pretty questionable at my age, and she'll, uh, be, she'll be 90 in April and not good health. And yeah. I'm 95, so I'll be 97 if, if they made that trip. So I doubt if we'll make it. <laughs> uh, you look like you could drive there to me. <laughs> I well, think you'd have no problem. I'm, I'm healthy. Have uh, you um, have you been able to go to the World War II uh, Memorial and DC? Yeah, well, I've been to all those places in Washington. Yeah, yeah good. Yeah, I've been good. To more, yeah, Marine Corps, the Marine Corps mm -hmm. place and the memorial. Yeah, but uh, that's quite a monument, boy. That yeah. Marine Corps. Uh, I tell people that uh, they say something about you're healthy. I said, well, it's no accident. You have to work at it. Let me show you something. Yeah, come on out here.